Criticism of the government's proposed changes to the Elections Act continue to pour in. 19 international professors who are experts in election law have joined the debate. This week, they published an open letter in the Globe and Mail. Here's some of what it said. It said the following, Canada's international reputation as one of the world's guardians of democracy and human rights is threatened by passage of the proposed Fair Elections Act. We believe that this act would prove to be deeply damaging for electoral integrity within Canada, as well as providing an example which, if emulated elsewhere, may potentially harm international standards of electoral rights around the world. This comes on the heels of a similar letter published this month by 160 Canadian professors. So why do these international scholars care about proposed election law in Canada? And why do they say the bill would undermine the integrity of Canada's electoral process? Joining me now is one of the professors who wrote this letter. Andrew Reynolds is from the University of North Carolina. Good to see you, Andrew Reynolds. You and 18 other professors wrote this open letter that was published in Canada uh, this week. How, how did this come about? Well, when we became aware of the draft legislation about Elections Canada, a number of people were sort of told about what was likely to be happening, what was proposed, and many of the international scholars who'd worked with Elections Canada were very concerned. Uh, I guess Elections Canada has a pretty good reputation internationally then, is that fair to say? I, I think Elections Canada is the preeminent example of a successful elections administration body. So it's not just important to Canada, but the rest of the world sort of sees Elections Canada as, as a role model and copies the best practices of Elections Canada in its own country, but also the lessons that it brings. So it was a very important issue. So w what are the concerns about the Fair Elections uh, Act, this bill, uh, and what impact it could have? Why would someone from, uh, who's, who's teaching in North Carolina want to get involved? We work a lot internationally in new democracies, and Elections Canada is, as I said, seen as a role model. So it's um, autonomy, it's independence, it's capacity to enforce free and fair elections is something that is transported around the world. Now, this legislation would severely do damage to the autonomy, to the independence, to the capacity of Elections Canada to manage good elections. Mm -hmm. So people were very concerned that the legislation would actually have a knock-on effect to newly democratizing countries. What do you mean? Do you think that it might send them a message about how you actually have to hold an election? I think it sends a significant message. The challenge that many democracy advisors are faced with in the field is to persuade new governments that they should set up independent, autonomous election authorities to be able to conduct legitimate elections. When a democratic, established democracy in the West, like Canada, seems to be curtailing its own ability to do that, it sends a very poor message to new countries in the Arab world, in Africa, in Asia, who are attempting to move from authoritarianism to democracy. What do you think is the most egregious part of the bill as you see it? There's lots of different changes around what the uh, chief electoral officer can say and do. There are changes around how voting happens. There's lots of changes there. Is there anything that is particularly worrying to you? I think both the curtailing of autonomy and also the capacity of Elections Canada is a deeply disturbing trend. I think the changes to voter registration, your ability to, to vouch uh, for others at the polls is also disturbing. But to me, the biggest issue is the problem in curtailing the administration's ability to be autonomous and independent and actually to root out uh, bad practices in Canadian elections. So you mean investigations or do you mean being able to speak about elections or promote uh, democracy? I think there's a raft of things in this bill that curtail the administration's ability mm -hmm. to uh, find problems and deal with them. Now, it's something about communicating with the public. It's also about issues of being able to have oversight over areas. And it's also about your ability to talk to the public beyond issues of just logistics. 
all those things are being changed in this proposed mm. legislation. And all those, all those things, I think, would make Elections Canada much weaker in its capacity to enforce legitimate elections. One of the things you talked about there, vouching, which has been uh, a focus, particularly of the opposition parties, because they believe it uh, excludes uh, maybe, you know, the disenfranchised uh, groups um, it, it, from voting. The government's response has been, listen, there are 39 kinds of uh, pieces of ID. Uh, everyone can have a chance. We don't need vouching and it could lead to irregularities. What's your response to that? The principle of any election in a democracy is to facilitate as many people who are legitimate voters to be able to vote on a given day. There's almost no evidence to show that vouching is uh, a window to voter fraud. There's huge evidence to show that vouching would, if it was taken away, curtail the rights and accessibility of tens, if not hundreds of thousands of Canadians to vote. So you're looking at a balance sheet between no evidence of fraud versus considerable evidence that taking away vouching would preclude legitimate voters from voting. And so I think that's the issue. It's about what is driving this proposal. Is it really fear of fraud and malfeasance, or it is in fact a partisan mechanism to try and preclude some people from voting who should be legitimately voting. So you think it's about tilting the balance in favor of the governing party? In every case that we've seen a similar type of proposal, it has been about tilting the balance in favor of a given party just as it has been in the United States. Finally, let me ask you, there's an awful lot of opposition to the bill in this country. The government at this stage has said, we, you know, we may make amendments, but doesn't seem to be backing down. Do you think that this letter of uh, international experts and academics will have any impact? Well, it would be uh, quite unique if a bunch of uh, academics had an impact <laughs> on a real world process, but you never know. Um, the, the, the eyes of the world and the democracy support world, the United Nations, um, the countries that support democratization are watching this because they rely upon Elections Canada to understand the best practices of elections. Andrew Reynolds, I really appreciate your time and your outsider perspective. Thank you very much, sir. My pleasure. The debate over this bill will ramp up next week as committee hearings start again. The Procedures and House Affairs Committee will hear from the former head of Elections Canada, Jean-Pierre Kingsley. B.C.'s former elections chief, Harry Neufeld, who also did a report for this government, is planning to speak to the committee. You may remember that Pierre Poiliev used Neufeld's report on electoral fraud to justify some of the government's proposals. Neufeld has since told CBC that Poiliev was misrepresenting his report. So there's going to be some interesting testimony next week. Count on Power and Politics to bring you all the latest on this important debate about democracy.